I think I read somewhere actually you bring up Bubbles a monkey. I think he's still alive somewhere, like a chimp thing, whatever. Ah, uh, yeah, poor Bubbles. I heard he turned 40, and he's living his life amongst the average monkeys. Man. Because he's keeping track of his own age, the chimpanzee. <laughs> exactly, right? Well, you know, thanks to us humans, right? Give him 40 bananas, he can't tell the difference. <laughs> he can't, not at all. He's just... Back again with another episode of Our Fuck It, specifically this time around, themed around Halloween Havoc, with a K at the end because it's scary enough to try to face the WWE, now without the Vince, but in the courtroom, I ain't trying to see any of that. So mine's with a K at the end, no copyright infringement, and I'm here, of course, with the expert, speaking of wrestling, Super Nitro, bro to the show as always. Let's go. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be back. Appreciate you. And uh, this is our like third or fourth take trying this again because, you know, another scary aspect of doing all this shit on your own and no fault of you. It's all me is, you know, the technical stuff didn't work. I didn't like have my brain on probably screwed in that night like I was a, a off brand Frankenstein or something. The screws are coming off. I wasn't thinking I didn't use a front lens. I didn't use the proper cords for the audio, et cetera, et cetera. He had, but, his, uh, he had his production value from Wish. <laughs> Temu or something. We're here for Halloween Havoc. I had to get the expert, the wrestler himself, who would know a thing or two about taking these uh, bumps, quote-unquote. You know, they take a toll on your body. Uh, Definitely, dude. These bumps, forget about it. You got to be, they stay that line when you say you have to be in tip-top shape. And that is very, like, that's just, that's not even the start of it, but yeah. <laughs> no, I, I guess I got to ask you, because it's been a while since I've talked to you on here, at least. Uh, can you name a bump or let's say your top three bumps that you least look forward to taking ever? DDTs, uh, especially to like, I mean, you know, the head, especially with a lot going on, you know, um, suplex, German suplex to be exact, because, you know, you don't want to land on your neck or again, or on your head or even like your shoulder terribly. And uh, like front bumps, like just landing on your face, like, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, like um, say rest in peace to Bray Wyatt, uh, Sister Abigail, example, you know, things like that. Short. Any any front bump is is a killer. Mm. <laughs> yeah, honestly, oh, damn near all of them, but <laughs> some are better than others. But I wouldn't prefer none of them. <laughs> or what about the ones where they gotta roll you up in the guy's heads in between your legs or something? Oh man, see, that's a different. That's a different type of insult. That's a different type of punishment. <laughs> You're like, it's not even physical. It's just more of a mental. Like, get your ass out of my face. <laughs> Get your crotch out of my face. That's a more mental thing right there. So, you know what? Yeah, he, he got me thinking now. Shoot, which one? I think, give me a power driver any day then. <laughs> <laughs> At least your face is uh, facing away from the stuff. Exactly. At least my, like, you know, my cranium is going to, you know, hit the floor versus, you know, hitting your crotch or whatever region, you know, it don't just need to be in. Well, having to take a tombstone, like, uh, with someone that's smelly. Oh, let's not talk about that. Or sweaty. <laughs> You know, when I think about it, it's a lot more. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's not even the pain. It's the person, like, delivering the, mo the moves to you. How, like he said, how they smell. Oh, forget it. That's another battle. So you got mental, physical, scar like, you have so much. It's, it is. Thank you. You know what? Thank you for bringing me down. No, not the Oh, my God. You know what? Okay. You, you got it. <laughs> You're wrestling PTSDs. Exactly. Traumas. Exactly. This is just too much now. I can't even. Uh, oh, no, wait. Not the other arm. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it's scary enough, though, what you have to go through physically in the ring every time, too. I, but, you know, it's scary, too, to imagine the probability we could have had in our lifetimes, or better yet said, in these individuals' lifetimes, as we're going to bring up now. Rest in peace, of course, first off to Prince and, of course, Michael Jackson, uh, whichever order you prefer to put them in. It doesn't really matter because they're both gone anyway, uh, to the great beyond. But... I, I hate to think that maybe while they were still alive or with us, we might have been robbed. Or we might have missed out on possibly the greatest verses physically. Because I think if it ever came down to it, if anyone ever signed on the dotted line, Prince and or MJ, I think we could have gotten more than just a musical battle. I think we could have gotten an actual throw down, hair pulling, because they both had a good head of hair. <laughs> battle, Michael paid for it and Prince just had it like that. <laughs> We missed out on an epic, just, I don't want to say cat fight like they were catty like that, but you know, I, I think they were, they were going to probably start a slap boxing and then probably someone was going to book it 
to be a big old venue thing in Las Vegas. Come on down, one time only, one night only. You know, the Prince know. of Pop versus the Purple One. I don't know. I mean, we say slap, and I think, sorry, you know, I like MJ, rest in peace, but I think MJ was a slapper, and, and Prince looked like he was more the puncher. He looked like he was more aggressive, you know. If you if you watch a few of, like, uh, Dave Chappelle skits, uh, you know, the way how Prince is presented, like, he was more the aggressor. So, I'm just yeah. saying, no no punches coming from him. That's all. <laughs> yeah, more, I, more slaps from Mike instead of, of instead of Prince. I think uh, I think uh, Prince is definitely one of those guys that was like sneaking a Superman punch or something, right? Just about Superman punch with a uh, with the motorcycle at that. Not even like he'll he'll excuse me get into the motorcycle, daredevil sky high, jump off, and <laughs> and punch Mike with the face. <laughs> But Michael wouldn't be taking that, though. I'm just saying, you know, Michael would get punched. He'd look. he like, no, Prince. Why you hit me like that? And then just go, Jamon, swing his hand back and give him a pimp smack. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? In Purple Rain, if you remember, uh, Prince actually did clothesline a guy while on the motorcycle. See what I'm saying? The aggressor. You see what I'm saying? It goes back to your theory about, like, the slaps. Who did? He didn't slap. He jumped off and threw his body on somebody. See what I'm saying? Prince had, had an aggression that he had to, he had an aggression on him. So, yeah, he would be more the aggressor, like, jumping and, and, and not hair pulling. Yeah. More face punching. <laughs> Michael kind of would be the hair pull. I'm sorry. Rest in peace. I like, I love you, Michael. But I'm just saying, you just look like you didn't, you wasn't down for that. You like, you just more like tip tap and, and, and move, moonwalk about your business. <laughs> Well, then again, if you think about it, allegedly, we don't know how true or if true at all this was. Michael could probably take a slap thanks to Joe Jackson, of all people. I mean, honestly, if you really think about it, maybe. But it was his brothers that could take a beating. I don't know about Michael. Mm. Michael looked like he always the one that ran away. That's what I'm saying. He's not for the violence. So if we're going to put the fighting scenario, Michael would be the one more like tap tap hitting and Prince is more of the the heavy hitter and mind you even though comparing in the height because Michael is way taller than Prince but Prince has you know Prince has something to prove the, the, kind of like the Napoleon complex like I got something to prove or like you're not going to punk me out I mean let's go back in time to when they supposedly when they met each other and uh, the bad video right the bad video when Prince was saying who you tell who you saying you, who but you said is yours so yeah Prince has something to prove you know, Michael was more. Michael was, was all love, no violence. But Prince, like, I'm down for anything, honestly. <laughs> and then maybe that's the origins of the moonwalk. Is Michael just one day happened to hit that move to get away from Joe? He said, "All right, you're good, but the rest of you are gonna get in because of Michael running away like that." I mean, what makes you think why Michael is, is the lead star? You know, why? What makes you think why he he's the slim one? He's the one basically was honestly running away from the rest of them, right? I mean, all his other brothers was nice, like, you know, to say huge, like, had size to him. Michael was a slim one, not because, you know, like, he was starving, because he was always running away. So he had to keep his, his uh, cardio up. <laughs> had to keep up endurance to run away from daddy. Exactly. So that's why, you know, that's what pr- contributed to his slim, his slim physique throughout his years. <laughs> But you got to think, too, of the two, if it ever came down to that. If, you know, we're just fantasy booking here, if anything. And who better than you, the wrestler, having been in the ring to know better? If you got to fantasy book the thing, who do you book to go over, as they say, and or win in simpler terms? Oh, man. All right, now, let's, let's, put, let's put the, how you say, the booker's hat on, right? You know what I'm saying? Like he said, all right, we booked the, uh, book the event. Ma- uh, Madison Square Garden, especially during the eighties, oh that that writes itself right there. Madison Square Garden, the King of Pop, who is Michael Jackson, versus the King of Music, Purple Rain, Purple Motorcycle. I'm sorry, I'm not much of a Prince guy. You know, rest in peace to both legends. And you have the 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 music. How you say it? The song of it all, the music of it all, the battles. Shoot the. The battle for all music. Hey. Oh, imagine that soundtrack leading into the thing. What? We are the world of <laughs> Purple Rain. <laughs> the ee hee ooh. Like, that's, 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 think about the, the ad libs, the scenarios. Like, Michael Jackson, you have your ee hee team. Wait, correction. I'm sorry. I'll do that again. Play, pay better respect. The ee hee versus the ooh. <laughs> so you can imagine. Oh, man. That's, that will sell itself out. Like, like what? Well, how much does does Madison Square hold? That's the thing. They would need a bigger event, but because we're talking about the '80s, yeah, Madison yeah. Square would be the best place to host that, right? The epitome. Yeah. Exactly. So that that I can see that. I mean, yeah, I can I can see that. That that would be a great phenomenon. That will sell out within sell out within sell out. Oh. Like mind you, you would need three nights. Like how WrestleMania now is currently two nights. You would need three nights because the fans would just have to 
they would have to do a count. No, how you say it? Three stages of hell, but it would be three days of hell. Day one would be a sing off. Day two would be a dance off, and day three would be the fight off. <laughs> For real, that that's how I can see that going down. Or pause the beat off in musical terms. I mean, yes, the musical term. No, no diddy. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I know we tired of that, but no diddy at this point. <laughs> Now, now that sounds like the dream spectacle you booked right there. As far as the venue, what goes down, three days was made sense, music, then dancing, then fighting, and all that. But then, let's say you're the booker. You put it all together. Quincy got the okay from you to put these two together in the ring and all that. Who do you have to book, as a fan of Michael, who do you have to book, if you have to, to win the thing? Ah, oh, man, here we go. Now, thank you for, for reminding me of Quincy. Because, all right, here we go now. Let's Let's do this. Three day spectacle, Quincy, right? Not even. Uh, three day spectacle, three different referees, but the last referee will be Quincy. Hear me out. Day one, right? Is the is the music off, right? We have Diana Ross as a special guest referee for night one, right? Because Diana Ross was Michael's friend, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Then we have nice looking friend. Hey, yeah. night two. Respectful. We have Papa Joe. <laughs> As a dance off, because remember, he used to teach his boys, right? He used to be the one, get it right, get the step. So, what you think? You know, you don't think he's going to be telling Mar- Michael, I'm the referee, but get it done. <laughs> and then, night three, which would be the fight, would be Quincy, right? Then you have the uh, then you will have the two referees, which is Diana and Joe Jackson, on the sidelines, if anything was to go off. So... Yeah, that would that would that would, that would be that's my spectacle. That's how I would book that, and I feel each night will make more and more money because each night there will be a different story. Like if to say the the, the Jackson brothers interfere in night one, you know what I'm saying? Prince's team interfere in night two, and then the whole family, the whole entourage, the whole group of everybody is there night three. That's like. That's so much. You, that's so much wrestling. So much storytelling. Nobody wanted to watch wrestling for the rest of the year. <laughs> I could book that right there. That books itself right there. The spectacles of all spectacles. The king of just music. The king of pop. The king of music. The king of art. Like the the best of hairs. The best of hair gels. <laughs> one guitar. One monkey. <laughs> you decide. It sells itself right there. You have everything you need. You know what's funny? I think I read somewhere, actually, you bring up Bubbles a monkey. I think he's still alive somewhere, like a chimp thing, whatever. Uh, yeah, poor Bubbles. I heard he turned 40, and he's living his life amongst the average monkeys. Man. Because he's keeping track of his own age, the chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Well, you know, thanks to us humans, right? You give him 40 bananas. He can't tell the difference. <laughs> he can't, not at all. He's just, but he, I think he does know, like, man, I used to have the life. I used to be able to swing everywhere. Now I got to share my... Now I got to get crap thrown on me by these guys over here, my counterparts. I don't even know who this person is over here. <laughs> Can't wipe my own ass. I have to wipe my own ass now. Exactly, right? Now I, I got to... I, like, I used to throw poop every... Like, at my... How you say it, My own land? Now, people throwing poop at me. <laughs> Aw, sorry, Bubbles. I apologize. You had the good life. Damn, I'm sorry. It's scary enough talking about Bubbles. Uh, I don't know if this is true either, but... Of all people, I heard is from Howard Stern, who had like an inside with people that knew Michael when he was still alive. Uh, supposedly, when Michael would get pissed off at anything, let's just say Prince, you know, threw a sub at him randomly, right? And he caught on to it. Mm-hmm. Michael would grab his security guards, the biggest guys possible. They would both hold ch- bubbles by one arm each in a basement. <laughs> Michael would get boxing gloves on and just start pounding away at, at bubbles. True definition of spanking the monkey. <laughs> no pun intended. Dang, that, isn't that animal cruelty, though? See? Now, here we go. Thank you. Now, thank you. <laughs> then we got the final night. Night three, right? You would think, all right, we say, let's say Michael wins the music night one, right? Uh, Prince wins the dance in night two, which I know people would be like, what the hell? So we're going to throw a little a little screw job in there for, my, for, for Prince winning the dance, right? Then night three, we have the physicality of both of them, right? Now, like I said before... Prince was the more the aggressor to me. He seemed more the aggressor. Michael was all in love, but so Prince was more the aggressor. So Prince get the upper hand. Then Michael sees the opportunity, right? And wait till Prince wears himself out. And then who comes in with a chair? <laughs> Bubbles. Throws feces in Michael's face, being like, that's for punching me when I get you know, while I getting mad. And Prince take the pin. And Prince wins. I mean, that sounds upsetting to most, to some. But hey, that's hey, why not, right? This is a world of fantasy booking. I feel that's how it could go down. Give the fans something to look forward to next time, because everybody, everybody thinks 
Michael got it. Michael got it because Michael, king of pop, right? You would think so. And then he's taller. But no, Prince takes this one and have the world in shock. Like, what? Oh, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people, even me, I love Michael. I didn't know of Prince. I knew of Prince as I got older. And obviously, Prince was always thrown in TV, you know, entertainment, television. But again, I never had an awareness to Prince. Michael was all around the world, so I knew Michael Jackson. I listened to a lot of his music. I watch a lot of his videos. I watch a lot more, way more things than, than Prince. So, yeah, even me being a Michael fan, I would still be like, damn, I'm sorry. Prince would cease the opportunity and, and, and take a cheap pin. <laughs> the opportunist Prince. Exactly. See? <laughs> He'll, instead of a... Instead of a money in the bank briefcase, he has a money in the bank's guitar. <laughs> that would be his cash in right there. He like, look, Michael, my butt is not yours. Take this. Oof. <laughs> you know, he was Jeff Jarrett before Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> well, uh, the more proper use of the guitars, because also to finish off Purple Rain of all movies, he had the the car, the guitar that would come on people pretty much. Oh my God! See, see what I'm saying? Like that, uh, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> all of that so it's is that right there again that would be a spectacle like you know why not that would be fun i could see that being sold especially again in the 80s what forget about it especially before how we have entertainment and and how so how entertainment and social media is now back then you had to watch everything on television think about how much views millions of views that alone right there uh radio hit like listening please like and and um live like live into i mean sorry live uh, attendance <laughs> that right there would be people would be outside outside climbing on each other just to see if they could get a view inside it would be it would believe me that that would have sold out that i think like that would have been the most my company or let's say if it was wwf at the time for those who don't know wwf yes that would have been like the most it's ever made oh yeah the most ever and i don't think anything will probably have topped that maybe you know later on but you know what i'm saying that would have been like <laughs> wrestlemania three times a hundred yeah, exactly times 300 honestly especially for the popularity these two guys had forget about it there's like what they have think about it how would you have felt in the 80s to know that michael and prince were going to fight like physically fight not sing or physically fight people would have paid just to see who's going to throw the first hit yeah People would have really been like, who's going to throw the first hit? Who's going to who's going to who's going to bleed? Think about it. To see the King of Pop or, or a Prince like bleed is like that would have been paid for like the bets off of that alone would have been like, I bet you Michael won't bleed first. Now, I bet you Prince going to bleed like money within money within money. like people bookies would be out the wall. Like just we got too much. We don't know what to who to, what to count here. <laughs> Being a Prince fan, though, I know he would have pulled some gimmick shit like he would have been bleeding purple somehow. Shh, purple with glitter <laughs> purple with glitter and then he would have been he would have been the first one to invent to bring out gatorade purple gatorade <laughs> he would have been the first one like purple gatorade drink some i win blouses <laughs> walk or, away. or he would have been the one to pull off like that uh, great muda uh, tajiri shit and like spit out the purple mist yes exactly and then michael to say maybe to copy right Maybe the copy, he would have uh, get his his hairspray and spray it in his eye. But like you said, Prince would have had more of the effectiveness of it. Because he's like, Michael, come here. What? He? <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, yes. That, oh, my God. That, that stuff, right? That writes itself right there. So, hey, again, I'm a Michael fan. But for storytelling purposes, we're gonna, we'll, we'll let Prince take this one. I'll let Prince take this one. I, I know y'all would feel otherwise. Put it on a comment below. Who you think? Yep. Shoot. <laughs> it's hard to argue that, of course, with an expert of being in between the ropes himself, Super Nitro, as you would know better than me. I can just imagine, but you would actually probably live it. Hold on, hold on. He say that, but how do you feel? Like, how would you have booked it? Oh, um, I, I think I'd book it any way for Prince to win it. See? See that? That's how you tell the story. Because obviously everybody going to think that the most popular is going to take it, and then what happens? Switch, snatch it from, snatch it from, you know, the rug from under them, and Prince takes it. Ooh, I'm quite sure, you know, we have a few people right now who'd be like, "What? You lying, Mike? I mean, Prince? Please." But that's how that's that's the wrestling world. Welcome to it. <laughs> and I think ultimately too, hopefully you can agree, just the fight itself would sell itself, obviously. But then. The promos leading up to the fight, oh the press conference leading up to it, the, the weigh-ins. It's that right there. Those again, that's money. 
everything of those would be money like to come just watch the way in money to come watch like you said the press conference money like um just promo videos within itself money people will pay just to go what is michael going to say what is prince going to say what is michael going to say especially again i i keep saying i'm born in the 80s raised in the 90s but if watching like the past history watching past television of these guys you just see how much like influence michael had and you can imagine how it would have been like for Michael to basically like just being on television talking about his talking about what's going to go down like that. Uh, again, every day people would just be like, did I miss it? Did I miss it? What was said? Like it would be like the the adrenaline of or the, the yeah the adrenaline of who's saying what would be what sell. Like you said, would sell itself like that would be the most talked about event for like that year alone. Like that year alone, that event would be talked about forever and ever and ever and ever. Just, just because of the name itself. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what, on that note, we're going to end it here because I think you called it right down the middle as fair as you could. But also, it makes just perfect sense the way you described it. That right there is Super Nitro. He's a bro to the show. Please tell him where they can find you, if anything. Find me on Facebook, right? Well, I know Facebook is considered the old vintage like social media platform. Fucking boomer. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at Facebook at Super Nitro or even Instagram is getting there. But anyways, at the real underscore Super Nitro on Instagram and on uh, TikTok, you can find me at, and as Super Nitro as well. Find me on all social media platforms. I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Can't I mean, can't miss me kicking everybody heads off. <laughs> hey, someone just came up to me and told me that you like disrespectful Latinas. Is that true? Go fuck yourself. Yo, it's over. All right, it's over. It's over. Move the mic. Move the mic. Thank you. All right.